Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is Scott Bradfield, the, ma I've been the master bather. I've been masturbating since I was 12, and I'm too old to stop now. I'm going to keep doing it. Just keep doing it right until right till the end of the road. I'm going to go over the hill. We'll go over the cliff like Thelma and Louise. I'll be masturbating right over that, that cliff. Um, so this is another week of lockdown. I forgot where I put my mask. And uh, I'm doing the third, the third top ten list of great short story collections. And I swear to God, I still, I, I got to the end. I thought, oh, I can just mention a couple of people. And I had another list. So I know you're, you're probably as tired of this as I am, but I'm going to do it, probably another one of these. All right, so I'm gonna, I, I did, I keep promising to show you the whiteboard. I just lie, every time I lie. And I just want to show you that I have the whiteboard, but I use this lime blue, this lime green marker of my wife's. And you can't even read it. It's kind of disgusting. So I'm just using it from my notepad. Um, I'm going to go through this quick because it's just, just too many goddamn good short story writers. Um, I'm rereading some Thomas Ligotti. I'm putting him in at number 10. Totally ra random arbitrary numbers. I'm, there's no no rhyme or reason how I'm listing these people. Thomas Ligotti. That's not the most attractive photo I've ever seen of anybody. But at the same time, uh, I don't know anyone who writes stories like this guy. And I get a, he's got he's got a really a fervent fan base. Comes sometimes kind of an annoying fan base. And and that's partly because he has this kind of deeply entrenched philosophical argument in many of his stories. But they're also really twisted, uh, weirdly written, totally original stories. He reminds me the most of a kind of a really, almost a florid Samuel Beckett. I mean, it's except that instead of just the pointlessness of existence, it's the sheer horror of existence to a comical degree. Many of the early stories, these are two collections. This is kind of a good book to get. I kind of prefer his later books, the later stories in Teatro Grotesco, which we talked about, but this is his two big classic books in Penguin. There's two entire volumes of stories. And they get, uh, I think they get a little better as they move along. But there's just, I can't really describe them. We're going to do more Ligotti in the bathtub because I, I like him more and more as I read him. So Thomas Ligotti, number 10. Okay, I thought we should probably do a whole list, and I forgot about it, of writers who are classics who should you should still read in the bathtub. Because a lot of classics, like Moby Dick, you really don't want to take that in the bathtub, trust me. Um, and you, uh, and I, I think Hawthorne is great in the bathtub. He's a, his stuff is very twisted. He's a little bit like Ligotti in terms of the, 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 uh, the complication of his story. And they're very dark and cynical stories. Not quite as dark as Ligotti, but they're still very dark stories. And I think his stories and novels are really, really well written and enjoyable. Scarlet Letter is a classic that is really good. And there's a collection of his stories. His short stories are amazing. He wrote lots and lots of great short stories. So Hawthorne, all right, you should really definitely read him during your uh, your uh, lockdown. Uh, one of my favorite writers. Again, we haven't even gotten to him. Tobias Wolf. I was wait. I have. I, he has a. We. There's a nice Picador edition of his first three books, which is one of my favorite books of stories. It's, it has In the Garden of the North American Martyrs, his first book of stories. His second one is called Back to the World. And then a little novella called The Barracks Thief. Those three books, along with uh, the boy, This Boy's Life, his memoir, are just th four of the best pieces of writing. I use them in classes all the time. All his books are great, but those first three books, if you can get them in, a, in that Picador edition... I really love that edition. Um, Barthelme. Barthelme's not my favorite. I go back and forth about putting him on the list. But he's funny. He's he, His stories are surprising. He's he's used a lot in anthologies, unfortunately, because I think most school anthologies are pretty bad. But his, his stories are fun. And City Life is a good one because it's one with all his weird... Um, he uses a lot of his collages and stuff in that. And it's kind of a beautiful old paperback. Again, you can get the 50 stories or the 40 stories collections. I really prefer going back to these single author. I, I think he's kind of hard to read after. I think one small, tight little book of his is about enough. And then he gets a little too winsome for me. But um, so some of these, all these early ones, I think are the better ones to read. Barthelme, you can't go wrong with Barthelme, but a lot of people don't like him. My students never liked him. Excuse me, have a quick drink. I'm going to rush through this one as fast as I can because i got at least another one of these coming up. Um, Brian Evanson, I'm putting him in at six. Again, that's, there's no rhyme or reason. It could be one or one or ten. It doesn't matter. Um, I reviewed this. I, I put a little note up on it. I love Brian Evanson's short stories. They're very similar to Lagatti in terms of the darkness and the twisted nature of the stories. 
this very different prose writer, a little more surprising in a way, a little less methodically worked out, and very funny and unusual. So you, you, he never really writes two or three stories in a row that are the same. Whereas Ligotti kind of uh, triumphs by doing the same stuff over and over again, if that makes sense. I like Brian Evans' short stories a lot. I'd have to put him on a list. One of my favorite short story writers. What kind of idiot would leave these people off? A top ten list. We've done two top land ten lists, and the idiot left all these great people off. One of my all-time favorites, Theodore Sturgeon. There's like 11 or 12 volumes of his collected stories. They're great. They're worth having. But I still send you all back to the original single-author collections that Sturgeon edited in his lifetime. And if I picked one of those, I would pick A Touch of Strange. Look at that beautiful cover. A lot of editions of, of Touch of Strange. This is really one of the best. It just it just got Mr. Costello Hero, which is really about Donald Trump, by the way. It's about fascism and about uh, about charismatic personalities and how they control people. Uh, they're just one story after another. They're very very brilliant and very unusual, and they really work together in that book. And when you're finished with those eight stories, I think there's eight or nine. You know, you need a break from a good short story writer. That's why I do feel the collected volumes are are a bit of a mistake. Sturgeon, you know, what kind of idiot would leave Alice Munro off? You know, she's great. Alice Munro's great. She's as good as everybody says. She's the only person who won a Nobel Prize for writing short stories. I just, this dear life, I haven't read this one. I've read half a dozen of her books. I like all her books. She's a wonderful short story writer. You can't go wrong. Um, we did a piece way back at the beginning of the bathtub about Clark Ashton Smith, really crazy California writer, friend of Lovecraft, writes, again, Ligotti-ish, uh, early Ligotti, this is much different from Ligotti, much more exotic and much more, a little su more surprising than Ligotti. Uh, brilliant writer. Peculiar stories. Very unusual. Two t possibilities. Um, this is the, the S.T. Joshi edition is really a nice edition from Penguin with lots, lots of good notes and it's just a good kind of scholarly type edition. This is a little bigger. The Stephen Jones does these, did these nice volumes for, is it Gallants or yeah, Gallant's back in the, I don't remember, back in, the, back in the day. And that's a nice, good, fat edition, really good selection. They have different different stories. You know, he's an amazing writer. I, I dismissed him for years. Very, very kind of florid, over-the-top, crazy stuff. If you like Lovecraft, you'll probably like it. But if you don't like Lovecraft, these are very different stories. Much wider Im imagination and a lot less claustrophobic and kind of dismal. Lovecraft has got to bring it being dismal. Okay, Smith. Two more. We still haven't run out of them. I haven't read him in years. But when I was about 18, I must have read five or six collections of stories by John O'Hara. This is one called The Hat on the Bed. I'm pretty sure I read it. I would read through one after another, after another, after another. I thought he was a lovely, wonderful short story writer. I don't know. I haven't read him in a long time. But... Um, it's kind of this 30s, 40s American, uh, it's sort of a minimalist style. Uh, people go, they're Richard Yates territory in a way, not as good as Richard Yates, but almost as good. And he just kind of knocked these stories off with a New Yorker for years. Um, so that's, that's a number two, 10, 20, whatever you want to say. Number one, fake drum roll. Isaac Bash of a singer is great. I have I read a book of his every couple of years. He's one of the few I read this last this last one maybe a year. It's been a couple of years since I read this one. Every time I read an Isaac Bash of a singer story, I become the boring person. I come down to I come down to breakfast or dinner. I see I see my wife. I start to tell her the story. You remember how when you were a kid and you'd have to tell the stories that you read or you saw on TV. Every one of these stories, I wanted to run outside and tell people the story I had just read. An amazing good story writer and a strange man who I don't know much about but I think as a short story writer he deserves to be number one on several lists so he's the number one on this list this week uh, Thomas Ligotti Nathaniel Hawthorne he's he's a classic and you should still read him uh, Tobias Wolf not Thomas Wolf and that everybody spells their name wrong so you gotta be careful of these wolf people Barthelme standard good short weird short stories Evanson you may not know peculiar Dark, strange, you can't put the stories down. Theodore Sturgeon, everyone who, you don't have to like science fiction to read great 
the great Theodore Sturgeon. He was a wonderful short story writer. Alice Munro, you all should know her, and if you don't, go out and get a book. Clark Ashton Smith, you probably don't know. Clark Ashton Smith, I'm talking too fast. I'm not drinking that much. It's just the talking too fast. John O'Hara, great short story writer. Isaac Bashev, a singer, one of the very best. Top 10 list this week. We'll have at least one more top 10 list. I'm as tired of this as you are. Have a great week. Uh, stay out of out of the stay out of the virus. Stay, don't touch anything filled with viruses. Um, wash your hands all the time. Uh, don't go outside. There's nothing to do out there. There's nothing interesting happening out in the world. Everything you need is in your library. I promise. And if you go outside, you'll only be disappointed. So have a have a great week. Uh, I'll do another one of these very soon. Okay. Happy bathing.